Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jared and today I want to give you kind of a quick tip on how to instantly improve your renders in Cinema 4D and Octane using an ACES workflow. Essentially all we're going to do today is give Octane a file that is going to tell it how to interpret light and color. This file has been developed by industry leaders in TV, film, and animation, and there's only a few steps to take your renders from this to this. Overall, Octane is just going to interpret light differently, and it's very easy to accomplish, so let's get started. First and foremost, if you want to learn more about ACES, you can come to acescentral.com and you can read about what ACES is and why and how it was developed. But if you just want to go ahead and get this installed and get it up and running in Octane, this GitHub link is going to be the top link in the video description. And what you need to do here is just come up to this code button and hit download zip. This is a pretty big file, so it might take a while to download, but just be patient. And once it's done, this is gonna be a very easy process. So after what felt like about 10 hours of downloading, we have this 1.9 gigabyte file. And essentially what we need to do is extract this to wherever we keep all of our 3D resources normally. So I'm gonna type extract, or I'm gonna click extract all, and I'm gonna put this in my resource file system, 3D resources, databases. And I'm gonna call this ACES OCIO, so I never forget what this is and I'm just gonna select it and hit extract. And after some amount of time, your system will extract all that data that we just downloaded into the folder. And then we're gonna be ready to load this into Octane. When that's done extracting, we'll have this folder called Open Color IO Configs Master. And we can come in here and we can delete a lot of this data actually. We don't need anything but the most recent version of ACES, which at the time of recording this video is 1.2. So I'm gonna delete all of these files up above uh, that folder. I'm also gonna delete these other three folders beneath it. And now what we need to do is have Octane read this config.ocio file. And this is what's going to instruct Octane on what to do with light and color. So what we need to do is open a fresh Cinema 4D scene and we can come into Octane and Octane settings. And if I bring this down, we're gonna to need to come over here into settings. And so this is gonna be the part that we only have to do once. And that is to come over to this color management tab and click use other config file. And then we're gonna point Octane to the file that we just downloaded. So in my case, that's gonna be right uh, here. So you're gonna come into your ACES 1.2 folder and drop in config.ocio. And so now this is done. We'll never have to touch this again. Octane will remember this file path and know where it's stored every time. I recommend leaving this on automatic. And so that's step one of this process. Now I'm gonna build a little scene just to kind of demonstrate what this is doing now. And so you can see that this is extremely harsh. Even if I change this to path tracing, uh, this light is very harsh and Octane is not really handling what's going on here very well. Our highlights are kind of just gone in all the different aspects of this image. So here's how we apply that ACES OCIO and smooth all this out and help Octane understand how to handle this light. What we're going to need to do is come into our Octane settings, go into Camera Imager, come over to the OCIO tab, and we're going to click ACES sRGB. Now nothing's changed here because we haven't told Octane to display the ACES sRGB. We still have Octane displaying the uh, regular HDR sRGB, but if you come over here into the Rendering tab and you change it to your OCIO tab down here, you can see that Octane recognizes now these highlights and has really smoothed out what we're getting here. So here's a quick uh, before and after. This is where we were. Our highlights are just decimated and here's with our OCIO. And so this is just helping Octane understand what to do with this light 
so much better than the regular sRGB OCIO does by default. Now, rendering this is a little bit of a different story. So if I click my render view right here, you'll see that Octane is not yet applying our ACES OCIO in the render view. And that's because it operates separately from what's going on over here. To bake this into our render, uh, there's two things that we can do. If you want to work in a true ACES workflow, all you'll do is change your color space here in your Octane render settings to ACES CG. And so that's gonna allow you to work in a true ACES workflow. It's not just going to bake the ACES OCIO into your images. If you want to bake the ACES OCIO into your image, what you need to do is change your color space here to OCIO. And then what you're gonna need to do is click select OCIO color space and we'll go output and output sRGB. And now Octane will use our OCIO, but it will output a standard sRGB image. And that's exactly what we want. So if I click render now, you'll see that we have these nice, not harsh lines on our image. And this is exactly what we'll save out from Octane. If you got a little lost in there, that's okay and perfectly understandable. I was trying to explain all of the steps as we went, um, but now I'm just gonna show you what this process looks like from start to finish uh, with no real fluff. So if I build out that same little scene that I had in there, I'm going to just draw my elements in. Uh, I need a, I need an Octane HDR environment, I need an Octane area light that I will rotate and scale down and move back. And so then if I render this in Octane, you can see we have these horrible harsh shadows, uh, harsh shadows, harsh highlights. I mean, highlights are really just not even present. And so to render this out in ACES, all I have to do is come into my camera imager and set my OCIO to ACES sRGB right up here at the top. I always keep forgetting that. Uh, and then I will change my view so that I can look at this accurately to OCIO in my render kernel. And so now we have these nice soft highlights that Octane is rendering much more accurately. To get this to render out in my final image, I'm gonna come up here, change my render engine to Octane. I need my color space to read my OCIO file. And then I just need to output a final sRGB image. And now if I render this out, you'll see no harsh highlights. ACES is teaching Octane to distribute this light beautifully in this scene. So that is just a quick tip on how to get ACES set up inside of Octane and teach Octane to read light and color more accurately. In just a few easy steps, this is gonna help you improve your renders immensely. And it's all just by having a little more control over how Octane views your scene. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I appreciate any new subscribers if this really helped you and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.